Mm. We can go right ahead and go into the um we can go right ahead and go into the first segment of the uh podcast which is going to be talking about the Denver Nuggets being able to oh, let me just move this light a little bit closer. There we go. The Denver Nuggets, they were able to finally end the series against the Lakers and um, in five games. They won off of another Jamal Murray game winner in the final seconds of the game to make the final score 108 to 106. And again, just another painful way to go out if you are the if you're the Lakers losing to Jamal Murray again off of another Jamal Murray game winner. It's like it hap- it's like the same story. Um, it was wash, rinse, repeat for the Lakers every single time. <coughs> for the last three games, they had to see themselves go up by a, a lot of points, and then they ended up have, have to lose in the end. Then they ended up winning game, um, game four. And then in the final game, they had to watch Jamal Murray hit another game winner to seal the game. Now, if you're LeBron, LeBron had 30 points, 11 assists, and 9 rebounds. And much like every single time in his career, his team lets him down with the game and the balance. Anthony Davis, who was very, who played very well throughout the entirety of the playoff series, had his first pretty um, lackluster performance with only 17 points. Now, he didn't play bad. He just didn't get enough. He just didn't score enough. Like, 17 points in an elimination game. Like, again, he shot 8 for 11 from the field, which isn't bad. But you have to have, like, at least 20 or 25 points when you're Anthony Davis and you're in an elimination when you're in an elimination game like that. Austin Reeves ended the game with 19 points. D'Angelo Russell shot 6 of 15 from the field with only 14 points. And LeBron, like I I said, 30 points, and he shot 11 for 21 from the field. Obviously was the biggest reason why the Lakers were even a factor in this game. And Gabe Vincent, everyone was hyping up his return. He only ended up scoring, he ended up scoring zero points, going 0 for 2 from the field. So, yay. And that was basically, again, that was basically it for all of the scoring for the Lakers. And Roy Hachimura, he ended the game 6 for 15 from the field with 15 points. So, I have no idea what Roy Hachimura was doing the entirety of the series he was almost a non-factor for the Lakers for, like, game one, game two, game three, and game four. And D'Angelo Russell, he only had, like, a couple of games where he was really good. He only had two games in this entire series where he was good. And in only one of those games was he um, were they able to win. And obviously, like, that was one of the biggest... He was one of the biggest reasons as to why the... The Nuggets were able to win in this in this series, and obviously, like not having a primary defender to be able to guard someone like Jamal Murray is also just not going to help the Lakers at whatsoever. Because Jamal he ended the game with thirty two points and seven assists. Um, Nikola Jokic ended with twenty five and twenty. <coughs> Excuse me. Aaron Gordon ended the game with seven points and thirteen rebounds. Michael Porter Jr., he ended the game with 26 points, and that was really, that was basically it for the scoring for the, um, for the Denver Nuggets. There wasn't really much confirmation that Jamal was going to play in this game, which was the biggest reason as to why the Lakers had any kind of hope going to this game, and expecting them to be able to potentially force this series to six games. But 
once Jamal was like confirmed to be playing in the series, I think it was um, it was never in doubt who was going to win. <coughs> Excuse me. And in Jamal Murray's mind, there was already never in doubt who was going to win, and he ended up taking the final shot of the game, and it ended up. It ended up going in, making the final score 108 to 106 with, um, I think it was like 1.5 seconds to go with zero timeouts. And obviously, like, since that was the end of the game, there was nothing that the Lakers could do. And the series was over just like that. And the Lakers, like, as a team, they really do not know how to handle this loss whatsoever like Darvin Ham ha, uh, recently in um, in an interview he um, well at least according according to Bleacher Report via Dave um, McManaman McManaman excuse me if I messed up that last name but he said if you're coaching a team and one of your starters is like 10 games in a row just shitting the bed what are you going to do? That's apparently what Darvin Ham said. And obviously we know who he's talking about. He's talking about D'Angelo Russell, who has been who hasn't really been he wasn't playing as well as we as people expected him to in the postseason compared to how he was playing in the regular season. And because of that, it's like he was one of the he was obviously one of the biggest factors as to why the Lakers couldn't find any success. But despite his pitiful performance, Darvin Ham's coaching was also getting um, caught in the in the crossfire because while there was while it was obvious that D'Angelo Russell wasn't playing as well as he normally would, Darvin Ham wasn't really doing anything to sort of mitigate the situation any more than D'Angelo Russell was, like. There was a common trend throughout the entirety of the series where the Lakers would slowly start to um, blow their lead, but instead of calling a timeout, Darvin Ham would sort of let the Lakers continue to play, and he would never adjust. He would never change the lineups. He would always stick with the exact same lineups. And when you stick with the same lineups, <coughs> excuse me, when you stick with the same lineups. It just becomes a lot easier as the series goes on for the team to uh, to defend you, because since you're only um, since you're only using like let's say like if you're the Lakers, you're only using seven other play seven players from your team, then you already have a game plan set before you go into every other game because it's like you already know that the other team is only going to use seven other players. And it just immediately, it just makes the game plan a little bit easier. Or even if it's eight other players, it just makes the game plan a lot easier on how to, on how to stop it and exactly who needs to get the ball when they need to get the ball, this, that, and the other. And another problem that, um, oh, I just read another uh, Bleacher Report comment saying that LeBron James is expecting to um, retire. It's coming. That's his quote. No idea when it's coming, but that's what he says. I don't see myself falling off anytime soon, but then, like, what am I doing? What more is left? At some point, you got to hang it up. That's what he's saying. I've missed a lot of family time, and they allowed me to do that and never put no pressure on me. That's what LeBron says. So... We'll see what exactly LeBron's decision is going to be because there was also rumors saying that LeBron might decline his player option and decide to become a free agent in this next offseason and therefore, you know, pick um, a different team to play with. And if he does decide to leave L.A., then... It'll be very interesting, like, what team he'll decide to end up on. Now, I just, I'm reading, uh, I'm just looking at another, 
uh, ESPN report saying that a Western Conference executive is saying that Kevin Durant would like to play for the Miami Heat. So another another poke at LeBron. He's just copying LeBron's legacy, deciding to take his talents to South Beach, if that does happen. Again, th- that's another... That's another thing that is going to happen. That's going to be pretty interesting going into um, like this free agency. It has a chance to ple- to be uh, like I mean, Paul George could be a free agent. LeBron James could be a free agent. Clay Thompson's probably also going to be a free agent, and we're going to see a lot of players move. Maybe we'll see a lot of players move to different teams. I personally think LeBron should just leave the Lakers. They have done nothing to help him win. And he's just wasting his time there. And he knows it. And not only that, but D'Angelo Russell, he's probably going to be out of L.A. as well after this um, after this performance. And the way he, he actually graded himself, like he graded his own season. And he was like, I respectfully think D'Angelo Russell's season was fantastic or something like that like something along those lines he was grading himself and i'm just like that's really what he's focusing on after losing the series in denver like he's really trying to sort of avoid um the criticism that he's going to face in this you know the criticism that he's going to face based off of these playoff series and now so now the Denver Nuggets they move on to the to the next round of the postseason there's still some more uh, first round matchups that need to be played and there's still some more first round matchups that um we have to review as well because like you know all these all these series they ended relatively quickly and not every series is going to be taken to only five games. There's obviously, like, there's more series probably going to six or seven games. But so, but as of right now, let me just go ahead and um, open up the, the standings just to see what team is going to play what other team in the... Okay, so in the next round, the... Timberwolves are expected to play the Denver Nuggets in the um, in the second round, and the Thunder are expected to play either between the Clippers or the Mavericks. So that is, you know, to be announced. We're still going to figure out. We still need to figure out exactly who's going to win in that series. And for the Eastern Conference, not a single team has yet to win a playoff series for the East. So we still have to wait for the results on the entirety of the Eastern Conference before we can even see what team can match up against what. But (coughs) there is a chance that two teams could um, could end their series tonight, and that is the Knicks. They could end the Sixer season tonight and win in five, and the Pacers could also end the Bucks' se- um, season tonight and end it in five as well. So those are the two elimination games that are going to be going down today. But we're going to be going into the second segment where I talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder beating the Pelicans in a sweep. And obviously, like, since they, um, and being the youngest seed to, well, not the youngest seed, but the youngest team to ever win a playoff matchup. So I'm going to, I'll be right back after this short break to talk a little bit about OKC and the Pelicans matchup last night. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign 
want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it, the noose if it's a moose shit, the stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip, you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody 